Welcome to Hoser Hockey Hour with your hosts, Michael Kikamo, Matthew Baczynski, and Kevin O'Hare. Welcome to Hoserville. Poser Hockey Hour is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. So why the f*** do you... Oh, see, there we go. We started this no, early. Fine, okay, we get, we get, we get, we get, very we get, first we, we, we can censor that later. Um, but why, why, why no, 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 no. I, I want to ask a question. Why does Michael get top billing? What is this? I'm going to do it differently every week. Okay, because I'm like, who made you the star of the show? No one. It's like we're like that. Nobody. We're that band that we're already fighting over creative privileges. It's like, like whose band is it? It's like, is it Michael Cacamo and like the re- and like the Funky Bunch? Like, no. <laughs> we're not going to be fighting over this this early. We're not. I. Uh, sorry, my my you're my name was the first one that came to mind. Well, of course it would be <laughs> a narcissist. Okay, that, 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 hey, I'm cutting it off. That, that, I'm minute. cutting. I'm cutting it off. I'm okay, it off. one of the notes. All right, that's it. The limit's, the limit's been, been had. had. We'll get a swear jar going next, and I'm like, oh. oh honestly, we will. And the donations are going to be made to the human fund. Yeah, the, the Michael. <laughs> Which the is Michael my gas camp. money yeah. to get here <laughs> because it takes forever. <laughs> I offer to drive to your house. Yeah, true. But you know what? Honestly, I was behind but I don't have dogs the slowest or, like, driver. Least, my mom's world. Italian. Yeah. So, like, only one half of my parents are loud, but you're both Italian. So your house is just constantly people yelling. And with the two dogs, that's just quadruple the amount of... Who's louder, though? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it's pro- probably your parents. So, I mean, like, it's like, hey, I've been to I've been to many get-togethers where a lot of Italians like to talk over each other to make no, themselves seem the, right. But this is the reason why I didn't want it at my house, because my mom would completely forget that we're doing this. And she'd, she'd open the basement door. She'd be like, Michael, where are the, where are the groceries? Where's the receipt from No Frills? Have you seen it? And I'm just like, Mom, I'm working here. So you're so you're complaining about driving to my house and spending no, no, money no, on no, gas, no, no, no. but then you're complaining, complaining if we get like it so. It's like, what do you want? Oh my God, you're like every other person on the internet taking it too far. I'm so like, sensitive, Mike. You, you I, really I, I'm gonna link to my Tumblr page <laughs> at the bottom of this and say like how terrible cis white males are, <laughs> even though I am one. So I'm technically the problem. I should just kill myself, right? Yeah. Matt, feel free to come in at any time. <laughs> This is a hockey podcast. Right? <laughs> I just double no, check it's, that. no, it's not. It's, it, it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, for those, it's been who... a long hiatus. Yeah, for the five of you who followed last time, you're you're you're, you're welcome. We're bringing it back. It's, this is for you. Due to popular demand. No, it's just us being really bored. So we figured, like, oh, you know what? Steve Dangle could do a pod. Oh, I'm leading in way too soon. <laughs> this is we why gotta, we, you we are gotta, yeah. the host. You're the host. Yeah. You're yeah, for sure. For That's sure. great. So You're the Adam Wild to this. Yeah, for the people who don't watch that show either, it's just like because I, I was telling my friend that I'm bringing this back, and uh, a couple of them were saying like, "What are you guys gonna do the show about?" And I'm like, "About hockey." But I, I made it explicitly clear. I said we're not gonna make it too, like, esoteric. Like we're not gonna make it too sophisticated that like people can just listen casually. And understand what we're talking about. Like, if we're going into like Corsi and like no. say percentage and just like we're going into like like the like the really deep farm stuff, people are gonna have no clue what we're talking about. And like, if it's like if it's just broad enough that like the casual hockey fan could be like, I know Sidney Crosby. Like, I want Simon to listen to this and have him understand what we're talking about. Then I'll know that it's fine. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we have a friend named Simon. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah, he might be on it. He might be on episode. Probably not. Never. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right so like, Kevin, i'm bored kevin i'm bored so yeah because i feel like i'm talking over matt here and the poor guy's Matt's, just Matt's Matt, Matt's just looking thing. at us right now being like you know just like just like biting his time like he's he's i th- i came all the way from saskatchewan for this via <laughs> skype but no so like so welcome back to hoser hockey hour we got we gotta we gotta just stick with triple h or something because like that's a mouthful in and of itself and we're gonna get tongue we'll get better we'll get better but yeah so but welcome back so this is season two question mark i'd say that was just a test run okay so we're this this is this is 1.0 this is like this is this is 1.0 that that was the beta this is now the we've unleashed it upon we'll release more than three episodes because it won't be my fault (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> we'll have someone more responsible be in charge of uploading so they won't delete them by accident, but actually on that purpose. Mean, that yeah. means me. <laughs> you know what, yeah. man? I'm like, uh, and, I, and I've listened to the old ones from time to time, and I just go, <sighs> what happened to those other two? <laughs> I know. Yeah, we we just those like, were are, those were our best ones, man. I know. I know. And you messed but, it up. Yeah, it's all my fault. But that's the story of my life. That's gonna be the title of my autobiography. Kevin, it's all your fault. Really, on my tombstone, it's gonna be well. At least he tried. Yeah. No, I, I don't expect anything <laughs> less. But um, yeah. So in today's episode, I figured we could just like talk about ourselves for a little bit, like sure. just to get like just a sense for because for- clearly no one listened the first time. So we should actually like properly introduce ourselves for maybe the six people that are gonna follow us now, maybe. Six and a half. Six and uh, who's the half person? Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, no. So like, I I could say something, but I'm not gonna go there. And I like, I just feel like properly introducing ourselves this time will probably be a good thing. Take as so, much you want, time as you want, Kevin. Yeah. So why don't well why don't we lead in with have. Matthew because he hasn't said anything yet. <laughs> God, man, like just like be be a part of the group. You're just sitting there. <laughs> God damn. No, I I appreciate oh, you're, you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Have man. A little bit of yeah. air time. This this is good. Well, where to start? Um, I'm a Leafs fan. That pretty much says all you need to know about me. I'm used to disappointment and being let down. So. <laughs> but they're doing well this year. For now. For now. For the first time in forever. So, But with a little bit of success comes high expectations. So Absolutely, yeah. Hopefully they... Uh, how, do Wait, all right. So, I mean, that was a bit side of a note, um, let down the other Side night, note, but... you're driving... Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. So excuse, I'm gonna grab a drink. Hold on one sec. Oh my God! Are you literally leaving? He's literally. Wow. He literally walked out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. for him. You know what? I thought at least by the second episode he'd leave, not like two minutes into the first. <laughs> that's that's just how we roll here, folks. So Matt, uh, is there anything more? Oh gosh, how do you host this thing? Uh, so you're a Leafs fan. You should be. You should be happy, man. Finally, all those years of suffering have finally paid off for you. Yeah, if I get a little bit of success, like uh, you know the Chicago's and the Pittsburghs of the world, yeah. it'll be it'll be worth Absolutely, it. Absolutely, man! And then you can rub it in our face one day because, quite frankly, I'm a Habs fan. We're not scoring too much, and I was and I know I was yeah, gonna save the, this till uh, he was here, but you know what? I've already said it. Kevin and I've scored more than the Habs have scored this season, right? And I'm just talking about in high school here, guys. And if you look at our pictures, not that great. No, that's pretty sad. Yeah, I know. Actually. I just saw my like borderline thing. pathetic. Even. <laughs> I know. So you guys are on the upswing, and the Habs are just like, well, we got Carey Price. Yeah, you're wasting the prime years of the best goalie of the last decade. Yeah, Root. well, you know, you know, it's only a matter of time before he raises his arms up again and then demands a trade. So I'm I'm waiting for that. We can only hope. <laughs> well, you can, but um, <laughs> he's our only saving grace. I mean. Ugh, it's been uh it's, it's it's not good guys it's not good and then kevin's a buffalo sabers fan so i guess he's used to disappointment he's one of the only winless teams yet this Rit? year oh wow Oy. well i mean they got jack yeah, eichel for 10 yet. more years no eight more years <laughs> eight years 10 million uh, bucks a year Have fun you know what that. though man how else are you gonna get him to stay in buffalo in buffalo <laughs> yeah you, you can I, I mean no no no, no but, disrespect to buffalo i i mean i went to a lot of games there i've had a great time there you guys are passionate fans but it ain't no new york it ain't no los angeles it ain't toronto you know so of course they're gonna have to overpay it ain't even las vegas right now ah uh, right to my heart i went to vegas this oh, yeah. summer hoserville i had a good time <laughs> Mike's now a converted uh, Golden so, Knights fan. So you guys so. aren't watching this right now. I'm going to post a picture up on Twitter, on our Twitter account, at Ho- at uh, Hoser Hockey Hour. I am literally in a Vegas Golden Knight t-shirt. I'm in a Vegas Golden Knight draft cap. Do people care? They should. They don't. They will. They won't. I'll force them to. <laughs> Fun fact for you, Vegas is the only undefeated team left in my the boys, league. As, as my of boys. Friday, October 13th at... 821 Eastern time, Eastern standard time. Um, you know what? I just wanted to, do we go through all the boring introductions yet? Or are we, uh... I, I pretty much mentioned that you're a Sabres fan. I think that's pretty much it. Nothing about my personality. <laughs> not, not, nothing about who I am as an individual. I think they just figured the it out during the two minute monologue fan. that you had, the two minute monologue that, that you had, that they, that they got what they needed to know. It's interesting that a lot of women that I go on dates with, they tell me that I, like, they always have a great time. And I'm just like, 
why is that? Because I, 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 I mean, <laughs> I'm a good time. I, like, I'm, I mean, I'm a catch, but I mean, like, because I, 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 I find that with the people I go out with, a lot of the time is spent me asking them about themselves. <laughs> and, but then it's just like they, they'll come to me later and be like, we, I had such an amazing time. And I'm like, you enjoyed just talking about yourself for two hours? And I just sat there Narcissist. like, really? Like, I Narcissist. guess it has to be the way. Because like, you're saying that I just like talked for two minutes and they get a sense of who I am. But I'm like, I didn't say anything about myself yet. It's like, I'm, oh, I think they got. I think they got all they needed to know. So I just poured myself a nice, healthy glass of wine here. So like, I'm, I'm good to go. Um, <laughs> so why don't we, uh, why don't we start with um, the reason why we're doing this show in the first place, and that is because uh, for people who don't know who Steve Dangle is, um, he is a. How would you guys describe him? He's just a local personality. Would you say like an internet personality? He's a local Toronto guy who just loves the Leafs, and he likes to talk about. He's the a Leafs. very animated guy. He's very over the top. He's v- he's a very interesting to listen to. Oh, sorry, we're no. uh, boring you. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we'll do this about later. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, you know what? Well, Honestly, I didn't. Chat, so I didn't <laughs> have exposure to this guy. I had no idea about this guy till Kessel got traded. And I looked up Phil Kessel trade, and I see this guy. This just this guy in this blue room, just going ape shit, and I thought, like my, my first exposure to Steve Dangle, is what I'm talking about right now. And, <laughs> Glad I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just like playing yelling at me. Oh, you're gonna censor that too. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, it's not the f bomb though. All right, kids, that's okay. Um, All right, little Timmy. <laughs> All right, little Timmy. Oh, you're tickling my feet, man. Do Sorry. You, do you mind? Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Can we play footsies? Do you want to buy me a drink first? Jesus Christ. You already got one. God, you two are insufferable. <laughs> we're, like the, we're like the odd couple. Like, we're so adorable. Anyway. I <laughs> just gloss <but> over that. <laughs> I'm trying to talk and stay here. Like on, I'm, Stay with me here, okay? Just listen, take guys. This, take this journey Just with listen. Me. Take the journey with him. Okay. Someone has to. To our... Three listeners, if you've made it this far, God. thank you. God, I they, commend you. You have better self control than they, I do. They, they hear You're my voice for a he's minute. They're just like, yeah, he's he's getting antsy. He's he's tell your tell your damn story. Um, did you, Matt? Actually, I want to ask Matt this because it's interesting. When did you first hear about this guy, the Steve Dangle dude? Like halfway through last season, when the Leafs started getting good. Really, that's recent. Wow. Yeah. Was, yeah, I've been following him for like three years. Well, yeah, well, yeah, because that's when Kessel got traded for me, and I think you found him out because of me, right? Did I tell you about him? Or no, did you find I, him out I came own? across him just like the 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 losing streak the Leafs had uh, towards the I think that was the end of the 2014 season. They were on like they like they lost like the last like nine games or something like that, and they missed the playoffs because of it. That's when I started following him. You know what? It's because of Steve Dangle now that I kind of have a soft spot for the Leafs because I I don't know for whatever reason I get a kick when he goes, Leafs win. Yeah. <laughs> so like for whatever reason I'm just like, you know, if as, as long as it's not, well they play tomorrow and they're probably gonna kill Montreal because they can't score, but like I'm just. I'm just, I just, for whatever reason, I just, I get, I get happy just to hear that for like two that's, seconds. That's so cute. Man. I don't know why. And, and the, the, the thing about this guy is, and I think why he has become so popular, I think he's finally, I mean, the fans finally have a voice now, kind of, you know, like before, before all this podcasting, all this stuff was just, you know, guys in suits talking to TV you know, your Bob McKenzie, your Darren Dreggers, and those guys are boring <laughs> and they're old, so they have no personality. <laughs> but, but this guy, I mean, he's also very animated. I mean, my brother, I, I watch every LFR he does, and my brother will just see me like watching it while I'm just like washing the dishes. And he's like, that guy, like, he's, he's really animated for a sports dude. And I think that's what makes this guy so unique is he is the f- everyday fan who has suffered through the all the turmoil like Matt has with the Leafs, the downs, the the downs and that one little up that they had. Um, but I, I think he, I, and also he only, he also knows his stuff. Like this guy could probably tell you a story about even every guy on the Marlies. Like, I think it's, 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 it's amazing. So he's just an everyday guy that people can get behind. And like, they, I think they love his personality. Like he, he tells it like it is, you know, he's not like every other politician. Like he just like, he, <laughs> He won the election last year because he was the everyman. He was just like, <laughs> what? 
I don't know how that. I don't know how I got there. I just you said called the personality, and I was thinking like, oh, it sounds like Donald Trump, but like oh in a good God. way. You know, I was kind of hoping that that guy was not going to be mentioned today. Like, oh, Jesus. but it, but like it's only a year after he was elected. Like, we're, like it's still <laughs> okay. enough. 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 We're cutting enough. it off. Enough. Yeah. None of that. Okay, we're done. Okay, I don't. I don't. God. We don't care. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's drink okay. Drink your wine. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Matt, do you watch like every like? I I know you probably haven't listened to every podcast he does because I I don't and I and I but and they and they're just long <laughs> and every week. But like, have, uh, have you watched like every LFR that he has done since you've watched started watching him? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I. The thing that really solid comment, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the the best, I think, the funniest thing that was on actually his podcast. Um, he it was uh, the first round. It was last year, and the Leafs made it to the playoff. Like they just squeaked in, and Steve is talking about how he's going to be doing the what he did for the opener. Kevin and I went to the opener uh, just last week. And he was doing the, what is it, a pep rally, I guess? Is that what you call them? Pep rallies? Kind of like a tailgate, tailgate party, party yeah, before tailgate the game. Party, and he was doing that. And so Adam Wilde, who's his co-host, and Jesse... Blake. 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 He, doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't talk much, but when he does, it's gold. But, like, uh, they kind of... It was, I don't know if it was a ruse or what, but they, they had his wife call in to surprise him that she bought uh, them tickets to the game. And you see the look on his face from like happy to dread because he's like, wait, I'm working. And his, and he's just like completely white as a ghost. And his wife's like, no, 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 you're only, you're only needed until like seven or seven 30. And then he goes from one second from like pure dread to like pure jubilation. And he does this like weird, like laugh. I, I'm not even going to try it, but like it, just the pure joy on this guy, on this guy. And like when he's mad, Oh man, like I, honestly, I could feel, I could feel all pretty much most of, if not all, of Leaf Nation can like completely stand behind this guy, and I think what he's done with his with his, I guess the Dangle brand, I guess you could say, is quite remarkable. I mean, he started like from nothing. He was doing videos in he his. He was doing bedroom. what we're doing, <laughs> but he was doing it in his bedroom, man. And then like obviously he made connections as he was going along, and now he's kind of he's kind of synonymous with the Leafs. Like you look at comments like on his videos, and it's like I, I remember reading this. I'm from Australia. You made me want to watch hockey, and you've made me become a Leafs fan. Like this is how much power this guy has. And like when I was telling a couple of friends of mine, a couple of hockey buddies of mine that. Excuse me. Um, that we were yeah, censor that out. That's fucking gross. <laughs> I'm sorry. I rushed dinner before I got here. Um, that we were doing this, and they were like, "Yeah, but man, I mean, that's great. We'll tune in." But Dangle, and I'm like, you know what though? Dangle, Dangle's podcast. What they got is a little different. Theirs is really leaps orientated. I mean, they know a lot. I mean, what they're doing is amazing. It's great. And what we're doing is going to be a little different and special in its own way. And it's like, I, and I was trying to. They were trying to say like, "Are you trying to take?" Uh, take from dangles i don't know what they were saying like steal his thunder or whatever i said first of all we can't even i don't even know if we can even do that but secondly like they're just they're great like there's nothing wrong i think secondly that's gonna be did i say secondly that's gonna be a new word jesus (laughs) secondly (laughs) secondly i think we can do our own thing and and ours and ours i think it's great that we talk like in general about the topics surrounding the nhl and dangle i mean they talk about that too but they're really like into the maple Leafs, and they and they, they should be they i mean they're a lot of them are in broadcasting in Toronto, and that's where his background is. So why not? So I was, I always, and I told my hockey buddies, I was like, you know, Dangles is his own thing. It's awesome. It's fantastic. I tune in all the time. I always, I always love listening to it. But we're going to do something a little different. And so, I just think. It, I think with that being said, doing something different. Why don't we uh, completely throw everybody for a loop and talk about the most obscure team that we could possibly talk about? I think you know who I'm talking about, Mike. My Golden Knights. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Okay. Now I'm gonna Matt. When you heard, and I and I know we've talked about this before, and we might have talked about it in the early episode, season zero, but <laughs> but, and I'm sure Matt, like everyone else, you didn't think this thing was gonna fly. Like, what was your initial take on hockey in Vegas? Because you had been to Vegas before, right? Before all this hockey yep. nonsense. Yeah, I have. So what was your take on all this? 
uh, Arizona Coyotes 2.0 was my first impression. Mm -hmm. You have one team in the desert that already can't sell seats, can't fill up an arena, gives you a pretty bad experience uh, in terms of on-ice product. Um, what makes you think Las Vegas, who's never had a professional sports team, period, is going to be any different? You know, uh, Vegas is a very transient crowd. So to build up local support for the team, I thought, would be pretty difficult to do. Like uh, a lot of the workers in Vegas that work on the Strip or wherever, they're working late at night, right? That's when everything happens down there. So when do you have time for those kind of people to head down to a hockey game for three hours? You go, you go, and then I'll because I because I just went to Vegas recently, guys, and I miss it every day. But <laughs> okay, Vegas. Did you think it was a good idea? Yes, or I no? thought it was more of a gimmick. More of a gimmick. Yeah, I thought that like it, it's more like a sideshow act. Like especially at the expansion draft, I found that the people that they drafted. Most of them I had never really heard of. Um, and the good players that they did have, it seemed like they kind of flipped them almost immediately after drafting them for picks. So I feel like it was more just like, okay, so they're just going to sock themselves with obscure hockey players and just have it be like, I honestly thought that the casinos were going to just be like buying tickets mm -hmm. and then like just giving them to people as like, oh, instead of winning money at the casino, you can win tickets to the Golden Knights. Like I thought it'd be more like, a sideshow attraction and albeit it's the inaugural season and i i don't pretend to have followed hockey as long as you guys have so i don't know what arizona's numbers were when they first started like if they were popular in the beginning as a new attraction and then they are what they are now in terms of engagement of fans because let's be honest like when you think of hockey you don't think of like the desert. You don't think of Glendale. Like, you don't think of Arizona as well, a market. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because when I went to Vegas, we, me and my dad took, uh, we took a, a, a tour of the Grand Canyon. And, it's lit, and the Grand Canyon, I didn't know this at the time, was in Arizona. And I was thinking about that, too. I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, in this, like, radius, there are two National Hockey League teams and not one shred of natural ice in this vast space. And I found that, like, very and yet Seattle um, and Quebec City are without a team. And, and what is my, this? What is this? They're talking about Houston. I read about like they're giving, another. They're gonna give that did you hear about this, Butch? Yeah, just the the owner of the Houston Rockets is kind of throwing yeah. coal on the fire of hey, I'd be interested in bringing an NHL. But of team course, over the here. commissioner of the NHL is just getting like just like rock hard, thinking like, oh, I don't have to bring a team to Canada again. Yes, Winnipeg. Like, what is that? <laughs> Well, and you know, my th the whole thing about like Quebec, first of all, Quebec was never going to get a team. First of all, they didn't have 500 million to just for, for a maybe. And second, what, they were going to have 17 teams in the East and 14 in the West. Like that wasn't going to make any sense. The whole thing, the 16 and 14 was stupid already. So I, I, I had no doubt in my mind that Quebec was not going to get a team. Like it was just, I knew it like, and I, and because Michael knows everything. Not he everything. literally is. He literally knows everything. You know, no, like I don't. you can say, you could ask him anything, and then he'll say later, like, "Oh, I totally called that." It's like, <laughs> uh, pretty sure you didn't, but you know what? That's okay. We'll just let you go with it. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? What are you referring to? Oh, just not only every conversation that we've had. <laughs> <laughs> God, we do bigger than old people, eh? He scores. Yeah. You know, not to toot my own horn, but if you go back and listen to one of our old episodes, uh, we don't have them up, so they can't. You'll, you'll blatantly, uh, yeah, you'll blatantly hear me uh, call the Taylor Hall trade, as Mike reminded me when that happened. Yeah, you did. So, you called that one. You, know. uh, oh, you called something else. Oh, I forget what it was. I think maybe it was Reimer possibly going to San Jose, but you weren't really thinking it at the time. But you also thought that Florida was going to go to the Final Four. <laughs> that's true i did think that but the taylor hall well, thing though i was very impressed some. because i do remember you think, saying and i remember us two going like ah, what are you talking about and then it happened i'm like he freaking called her <laughs> so. see but she didn't get as much right as michael so it's like we can give you some credit but not nearly as much because you're not that smart <laughs> oh, <yeah. what? laughs> what are you talking about oh <laughs> uh, but you know what man like it's like oh my God. i don't know if you um never Matt, have wine again while we do this show <laughs> 
Oh God, because like I, I mean, whatever. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm choosing to ignore you. But Matt, did you watch the um, the home opener for the Golden Knights? I did. I watched the first ten minutes because that's as late as I can stay up at oh, night. Oh God, you're old. Um, but like, did you um, like did yeah. you enjoy, like what did you think of the but, like? Uh, it seemed like it was a full house. The people were totally into it, and. You know what? I, I want to go on a separate tangent, but we're trying to stay focused because I want to talk about the number of goals that have been scored this season so far and how insane that is. Because okay. what was the score of that game, Matt? It was like well, it was only four or five one, wasn't it? But still, like it's like it seems like the NHL has just been complaining, like, oh, there's not enough flash because not enough goals have been scored. But then with the game that you and I went to on Saturday, the Leaf it was eight yeah. five. Oh my god! I, they, and the night before, in what was it, ten one for which teams again? Chicago that was Chicago Pittsburgh. over so like, Pittsburgh. When people are saying like there isn't enough excitement, it's like you have the excitement, and you see well, the you the, all, the Vegas fans were totally into on it. On the flip side of that, though, you can have a very close game also be entertaining too. Oh yeah, right. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I couldn't. Well, and I also called. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that that New York was going to tie it up too. So. It was. It's typical Leaf Hockey. Thank you for proving my point as no, well. Anytime, yeah. <laughs> man. Anytime. We had this. Oh my god. Oh, great. We're gonna go back to Vegas. But like, we had this kid. He must have been what ten years old, maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah, eight or nine. He was crying when uh, Lundqvist, who was his favorite player, was pulled. He was crying, and our teams were getting smoked that night too, both uh, Buffalo and Montreal. And we we were just like, don't worry. You know, if it makes you feel any better, our teams are getting killed. But it was funny, though, to see, because I don't know if you saw it, but people around us, because we were also cheering when New York scored as much as when Toronto scored. So everyone's going like, are these guys confused? <laughs> like, what's, one of them's wearing a Leafs jersey. Like, For I don't the record, I was just wearing civilian clothes, so I could have gone either way. But the fact that you were wearing a Leafs jersey, and then like you were like, yeah, New York scored. I'm sure they'd be like, what's wrong I, I felt with bad there? for the kid, you know. Like, he's, he's probably never gone to a hockey game. He finally goes to see his idol. Or his favorite play. What was your What was your favorite quote of the night, Mike? I recall you telling him in earnest. You kind of took him aside for a second. You're like, "Kid, you remind me of a young me." And I'm just <laughs> I like, like that. "You did say that." No, no, no. Actually. I never you, said that. You're like you. The, you t- you told me. You're like this kid reminds me of when I was. Oh his right, age. because he was getting so excited when they were tying yeah, it up. Yeah, because it's yeah. all about Michael. Oh my god! <laughs> I also said that because he was a goalie. He reminded me of my brother too. Okay, <laughs> your brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> But you suck. Vegas, oh, dude, I, I love you too, man. This is like, <laughs> this is what happens when, like, when you're first friends with someone. Uh, we're, I'm talking about like when we we're playing soccer together, and you oh. saw me as a fat, ugly kid, and you're like, "Wow, this kid only has scored like what two goals in the entire season? Mm, I'm not going to be seen with him." And then only until after high school to become friends. So now, what are you talking about we were we were high, best friends in high school. Oh, we were. But I'm saying before that, when we first met. Yeah, but we were not so much as a single school. word of conversation between us because you were the good kid <laughs> and I was the kid that would just like just like screw off and like just like pick the oh <laughs> props to me for the self center there. I wanted to say f off, but I didn't. But like it's just like the fact that like, I, I I guess the the interesting point is that like it's all about Michael. We should call this a Michael Kakamo show, the oh the God. Michael Kakamo podcast, and then we'll be the other guys. Oh um, my God, no! But with regards, we are not calling it that. With regards to um, to Vegas, though, I, I guess an interesting point then would be, Matt, where do you want to see the next expansion team? Because 31 teams in a league is just an awkward number. Like, where do you want to see the next expansion team, hypothetically? If I if I had to put my own money on it, I would say Seattle is probably the is best Is that where bet you want to see them, though? Because there's... And I would, too. I think it fills a, a void in the northwest U.S. where there really isn't a whole lot for professional hockey um it gives vancouver right away a regional rival which i think vancouver kind of needs they're kind of left alone you know like as poor of a team as they are like they just have edmonton and calgary and maybe the california teams but that's they're really kind of lost in the shuffle can't man. really call edmonton that a and calgary are doing their own thing in all likelihood carolina just gets shipped to seattle because i don't think but that doesn't solve the numbers problem no, no i think i think what's going to happen is there's still 31 no, teams what's oh, going to so happen they move is, franchises is that right, doesn't add a team right. it just moves it you're right no you're right no you're going to see an expansion team in seattle and i pretty again would put my own money on carolina moving to quebec city oh. Okay, so we're calling it now. Uh, it is Friday, October 13th at 8.42, 2017. Yep. 
And if this happens, then Matt is literally Nostradamus. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> He knows everything. And Michael, can you just... You can shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been quiet this entire time. Yeah. No, but I, I, I like the fact that the reason why we talked about C. Dangle was not only are we trying to, like, rip off a show. We're not trying to rip we're, off But we're anything. trying to get a popular person to notice us. It's like, <laughs> hey, guys. Like, we're doing the same thing you are. Plug us. But it's just like... <laughs> we're, oh, we're not. We're so shameless in our delivery. I love it. It's <laughs> oh so, good. so good. So <laughs> good. We're candid. Yes, if that, that's the word. You know what? Though? I think we'd have a good if we went out for beers with those guys. We'd have a good time. I think we would. I, I think, think so. They seem like easygoing yeah. guys. Uh, I'm afraid. So you're gonna say something stupid? No, and I'm piss af- them off. No, I'm afraid that we're gonna actually grab drinks with them, and then we're gonna hit it off, and then you're gonna be like, "I told you we hit it off." It's just gonna be like, "Yeah." <laughs> or yeah, are you afraid Michael. that I jumped ship or whatever? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just like, oh my goodness, that's too you funny. Know, you know what though? Um, I was just as I guess not. I guess I was got, uh, as weird about having a team in Vegas just as everybody else was in the no, like northern hem- hemisphere. But I, when I went there, and literally, this is how Canadian I am, guys. My first two tri- like my first two uh, stops when I finally get to Vegas is the T-Mobile Arena. <laughs> I didn't go to any of the casinos. I didn't do anything. I went to the T-Mobile Arena twice because I wanted to get a hat. And then my brother found out that I got a hat. So he's like, uh, go back. I want a hat. I want go back to the T-Mobile Arena. I want a hat. So I literally went there twice before I went anywhere else. And I think th- th- where Matt brought up the whole Glendale, Arizona thing, I-, I agree with Matt. When I first heard about the team, I thought exactly that's that's exactly what I thought it was going to happen. But looking at it, and now, okay, this all could be just the first year. You know, it's a honeymoon period. Everyone's happy. Everyone's excited. Um, and that could be true. But also, you got to look about, you know, Arizona. Like, their arenas, they switch arenas. And they're never really, like, in the central location. It's kind of like Ottawa, where it's kind of ways away. It takes a while to get there. And it kind of deters people from being there. Whereas the T-Mobile Arena is literally on, on the strip. And if you take the monorail, there's a, there's a little-known monorail that uh, goes throughout the entire strip. And it's, like, the last one of the last stops there. So it's very accessible. And it's funny that you were talking about, Matt, how um, three hours in the night. Let me tell you something. Vegas is 24-7. That's the real city that never sleeps. That city is going all the time. So a couple of hours doesn't really – it doesn't really do matter much because you know what? They're gambling 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, even 3 o'clock. They're, like that city is going all the time. And so it was funny, though, because I actually met some of the season ticket holders when I was at T-Mobile Arena. And um, I asked them, I was like, you know, what is what's the story behind all this? Because, you know, I mean, we're in Canada, so we also we obviously have our bias. And obviously we take it as a personal offense that we didn't get another NHL hockey team. And, um, well, they, they said, you know, generally, I mean, they have done a good job trying to market this team now. As they said that, I was thinking, okay, I've already been around the strip. I've only seen one little, sh- one little shop with one wall of Vegas hockey gear. So it was also in the middle of the summer. So it was July, August. So I mean, you take that into account. But they apparently like, and I've been following the Golden Knights closely, how they've been marketing the team and and all that. And I I think it's it's kind of brilliant how they've been marketing this thing. How have they been marketing it? Through social media and you know, um, just the. Uh, well, I'm sure. Yeah, I gotta say their Twitter account is probably the best NHL. Oh my god, team Twitter absolutely! Account right now. Bar none, they it's they're already the friends with with Kings fifty are, with fifty and oh seven, like the, the Danny King, Heatley the parody. Kings are, the Kings is a pretty good parody. No, like it's not a parody, but like like the Kings Twitter is pretty good. Yeah, but not on the level that the Golden Knights is because they're actually doing what, like in my opinion, what normal companies should be doing with regards yeah. to social media. Yeah. You don't get some <clears throat> stiff tweeting scores and news updates. No. That is so droll. That is so boring. And I like that they got Gary Lawless to leave Winnipeg. I mean, well, it's Win- Winnipeg. Is- no offense, Winnipeg, but you're no Vegas. <laughs> but they got Gary Lawless, like a guy who's been around and stuff, to kind of be like, I don't know, what would you call him? Like, 
the teen reporter or something like the beat reporter yeah kind of the the voice right of the, and that's a guy and, the and, media and voice and, of and the team and the e- golden knights easily could have gone with you know oh let's get not i don't want to say this because it's gonna make me sound like i'm carry I'm, I'm calling lawless like old which i'm not but they could have gone they could have gone with like you know let's make it all youth and you know let's bring someone in who does no idea what they're talking about which some teams do but they brought in a lot of experience so like a guy who's been there before so they like really and even the season ticket holders were telling me like i mean it's not a like a three four five year plan they want this team to last a long time and they they said well they were like oh we sold season tickets in 13 minutes and i'm like well winnipeg like did in four but i (laughs) i didn't say that but like they're very excited everyone that has bought season tickets are have been treated well and are really excited and you know they're the golden knights are showing a lot of gratitude to their season ticket holders um which is true because you know which they should be because without them like they don't get a team so well maybe it is the honeymoon period but i think them being on the strip itself is a big win for them. It's a huge win because even if like say I mean you us three would be going, right? Just just say what oh, are we going to sure. do for kill off a couple of hours? Absolutely. Oh, well, let's just, you know, go take the monorail over to to T-Mobile Arena, we'll probably go to the casino. And then go to the pretty, casino after. Got pretty drunk and like, Okay, yeah. we could go before. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't know. <laughs> doesn't matter to me when we, we go. We would just but like think how awesome our lives would be. If we lived in Vegas instead of Toronto and where, where are you? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Middle He's of He's literally nowhere. in a town, people, where one side of the street is a different time zone than the other. So it's like. No, not a time zone. Can just we just like not move to Vegas? Like our lives would just be infinitely better. I don't. Because I don't, you just keep, because you keep harping on how much of an amazing time you had. Look, I, and you know what? I've talked about this with my dad when we were there. I've been to both Los Angeles and Shout Vegas. Out. <laughs> but like i don't know if i would live there that's that's it's fun to visit that, yeah it's, to it's great to visit for like a weekend or a couple of days would you say la is similar to that or no 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 because there's downtime in la vegas downtime in vegas is very rare like it's go 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 it's it's a very fast yeah, the little guys flicking like just like cards at you for like there calls. are little people yeah. there yeah <laughs> little filipino guys that will just be like flicking like girls cards at you just like to be like like that could be a collection game right there the like, weirdest thing like, about that place was and i told kevin this and i've told my friends this they literally have signs they're like girl at your door in 20 minutes or less like a pizza ad which I found so weird. I was like, "What the hell?" Well, let's let's shift conversation from prostitution to hockey <laughs> because I'm looking at the time here and I'm thinking, like, "Yo, we're almost we're almost at the limit here, man." Matt, are you got the timer going? Yeah, we're two thirds uh, of the way through. I think we can start the third, third period. period. Of the oh. show. I love it. No, no, no. I remember loving it before, and I love it now. That's so. Oh. I called it. You did call it. <laughs> Let's have that be a let's have that be a let's have that be a moment. Jay and of the Dan show. have you blew it. We'll have you Michael, called it. Michael called it. Michael yeah. called it. <laughs> I like you the called, you it. called it. That's a good one. But, I love um, it. I love it. So like obviously Buffalo is really doing bad this year, guys. Like they're doing really bad. So I'm just gonna pull up Matt's season predictions because I, I I wanna because he's gonna. Oh, do you uh, still yeah, have some more conversations? I have to really. Sh- you know how bad that was? I totally forgot about Vegas. Well, no, but then you told me. You're like, oh, we'll just put Vegas dead last. And I'm, and I'm like, you <laughs> jerk. Well, so given that they are 3-0 and right now, do you see them keeping mm, that success it, going? It, depend, you see it depends how well to Earth Fleury a little plays bit? because he's playing, he's, play, he's playing so good right now. I, I feel like almost as like a big middle finger to Pittsburgh for like just like – putting Matt Murray in front of him. I well, think, like, what are I you going like, to do, though? No, but like, if you're I, Pittsburgh, what are you going to do? No, exactly. But I feel like Murray is like, I was going to play backup to a young kid or I can prove that I'm still a number one goalie. I feel like he's playing like he has a chip on his shoulder. Like this kind of energy, this level of like, because what is he What is he proving? He's older. He's already has, he already won a, a championship. At this point, why is he playing so well? I feel it's because it's like he still has something to prove. You know what? It could be that, but I don't think he, I'm, he, you know what? He understood what was going on in Pittsburgh. Honestly, like he, he, he could have stayed if he, he did. Well, I, yeah. Well, Matt Murray played very well. No, salary and, and that cap was the other thing. Era, salary cap as well. I mean, 
it was a difficult situation that the Pittsburgh Penguins were in. And, and I think Fleury, on the whole, treated it like a pro. Like, honestly, I, I don't think that there was an, anyone that would have shown as much grace and overall a positive ad. Now, and I, I imagine he'd be going, oh, my God, like, what the hell, like, future and where to move and all that stuff going through his head. But in front of the cameras and stuff like that, I thought he handled it masterfully well. So, you know, I think it's the – for now, you also have to take into account they played Phoenix – Arizona. They played Arizona twice. Dallas kind of laid a goose egg that game, and I don't think they played particularly well. So I don't think it's going to keep up. As much as I love Vegas, I want these Golden Knights in their gray jerseys, oddly enough, <laughs> um, to do well. I don't see them sustaining that. And, and they also could be riding an emotional high because of after what happened with you know the, the traumatic events and all the, you know, the, the opening ceremonies and all that stuff. I think as the season goes on, because you play 82 games, you don't play 5, 10, 15 games, it's, it might catch up with them. So I don't know. Matt had them last overall. I don't quite think last overall. I think, I think Buffalo is <clears throat> going to be last overall, guys. Let's be real. And then gets um, and gets screwed over with the one, number one pick in the draft. And it goes to and it goes and it I goes to Edmonton, who year. made the playoffs. It's like what? <laughs> no, not that year. I'm just saying. You're talking they, about Philadelphia. I'm talking about. Thing. I'm talking about this year. Oh, I'm going to say oh. what's going to happen is that like Edmonton is going to screw over Buffalo again. <laughs> that they're going to get the pick, even though they probably will make the playoffs. So it's just like why. That was such a weird lottery, though, this past year, eh? Like, Philadelphia if you see, oh, just missed yeah, it. Yeah, everybody the number won two up. pick. And yep. Colorado, like, Joe Sackick, you can see the blood draining from his face can, when he finds out where he's picking. Can you just, like, just like, let's go back two years for a second here. Because um, I'm still not upset, because I understand, like, if you watch a lot of the Tim Hortons commercials, you watch a lot of the, the, the Reebok and the Rogers commercials, they all feature Connor McDavid. Because he's right. on a Canadian team, right? Ah. And what a better storyline than the next great one playing for Edmonton. Now, imagine if he was drafted by Buffalo yeah. and he was playing there. Would that be a better storyline for the league? Absolutely not. Also, I mean, to counter uh, to a counterpoint, uh, Crosby was going to Pittsburgh, so I mean that didn't that didn't stop him from getting endorsed by Tim Hortons and all these. No, other but like you people. know what I mean. But like Pittsburgh is like oh, a yeah, bet, like you have like you had Lemieux, you had yeah. Yager, you had a like Buffalo really had what French connection, Dominic Ryan, Hasek, Ryan Miller, that's Miller. It. Like who do you got? <laughs> so it's just like, like I I see it made sense for him to go to Edmonton. Yeah, no, it, it's a better storyline for sure, absolutely. And now that Wayne Gretzky is kind of like he's back kind of, to Edmonton, like it's just like the Renaissance so back. It's just like he's bizarre. at every event. He's just like hey, he's at the box. He's like, hey guys, what's, what's going on? I used to be somebody. No, he still <laughs> is somebody though. Like you, honestly, like actually, you know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna go a little off road here, guys. This is a difficult. This I had a hard time answering this question, but if you had to choose to have a couple of pops with either Wayne Gretzky or Don Cherry. Who would you go with and why? Matt, Matt you can go first. <laughs> is, is he there? Do... Oh, geez. Put me on the spot. Yeah, see? It's a tough decision. Uh, um, that's a toss-up, What was your man. question? If you were listening, I said you had a choice to have a couple of pops, a couple of brewskis with either Wayne Gretzky or Don Cherry. Who oh. would you go with? Why? Probably Wayne Gretzky. I, well, I asked Matt to answer first, oh. but sure. No, okay. No, Matt, you go. No, 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 no. He was, no, he go was ahead because I'm he, still he's thinking. Still, he's still – okay. Why Wayne Gretzky? I feel Grapes is at a point in his life that he's just really old. So I feel like he probably wouldn't even remember that we went out. Like, like the next, <laughs> oh like the next day. Oh, my Like the God. next day – what are you like looking for Absolutely, a long term relationship? Because it's or just something. like what you're gonna talk to him about. Like, oh, what was it like hosting Boston? Uh, what was it like sitting next to Ron McLean for like 30 years? Like, it's just like, oh, it's been good. Yeah, it's just like, oh, let's go Leafs. It's just like, but like, <laughs> oh my like God. Wayne Gretzky though, with like 99, you could talk about his winery in Niagara. Like, you can have like, <laughs> like you could have like a more you know what deeper conversation. That's I hilarious because I shout out to this guy. I had a conversation with Ted Nolan. And we only talked about our Blackberries because we both, well, at the time I did, we both had Blackberry classics, but he would have the holster like right on his like belt buckle, which I was told never to do. But we bonded over that. he literally gives zero 
But it's like it's the same thing. You talk to the greatest hockey player, arguably of all time, and you talk about and you want to talk about the winery. And I talked to Ted Nolan about Cause, cell phones because you need to understand like all these personalities in hockey. It's like if you went to like a film star, like if you went to like George Clooney, yeah, would you say, oh, what's it like working with this person? Would you say, like, oh, what's your favorite movie? No, you'd probably say, what do you like to do in your spare time? Like, what kind of sports do you like? You don't talk about what the person does right. to them because they're just like, oh. I've been asked this a million times. That's true. You talk to Wayne Gretzky about his winery or like what what, what is her? 99. <laughs> yeah, but like, it's like, that's an actual conversation. Yeah, no, Not sure. just about, oh, you wrote three books, Don Cherry? Oh, great. Let's talk about this one quote I loved. And he's like, did I write that? <laughs> uh, okay. okay. That, that's that's my saying, point. I'm not saying you're wrong. Well, there is no I'm right and wrong more, in this. I'm it's saying, just it's personal preference. Yeah, so by you telling me I'm wrong, I'm not telling screw you. you. <laughs> not te- I literally just said, I'm not telling you you're wrong. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, Matt, did you, have you come up with it? Yes, uh, an answer, yes or no? Yes, I have. It would be really? Wayne okay. Gretzky. Only because I think the stories you'd be able to get out of him are a little more uh, in my lifetime. More relevance. You know, like... Like there, I know about a lot of hockey stuff from the '60s and '70s, but I don't. You know. don't care. It doesn't affect me, right? I didn't experience it, but things in the '90s, and you can talk about the O2 Olympic yeah, team well, and what went wrong like in '06. Like, I can relate <laughs> what went a little wrong in 06 to it. Everything went wrong Rip. for that guy. Rest in yeah. peace. But, Rip. Um, I the only thing I'd really like. Okay, Wayne, man to man. You went to L.A. because of Janet, right? 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 Kind of seems a little weird, man. Three weeks later, and you're already now. On a for plane. the people who maybe don't know, who's Janet? His wife, Janet Jones. So she. So you're saying he was, that she he was an went. Actress, so you're saying that he went to L.A. just to be with her. Don't you find it weird though? Three weeks after, hmm. I mean, it makes sense. Now there's been like tons of documentaries, and then you see every one. Dude, Wayne Gretzky just bored to talk about. You're it. just telling me that those are like a ton of nerds that have yeah. nothing better to do with their lives. Like Wayne Gretzky, what about this? Okay. And he's like, how many times do you have to ask this damn so, question? With this que- like with this this thing, question, I, this question, I've uh, I've I went back and forth on this um, because I I love Wayne Gretzky. I I'm one of the few people that have his like uh, hockey hall of fame coin. Uh, that SO put out. Like I have a bunch <laughs> of books on the guy. I've read so many books about this dude. Honestly, I know a lot of details about his life. But I would go with Don Cherry, and I think now, yes, he's written, read, he's written, he's written three books. I've read each of them probably two or three times. I just think, and you say that Don Cherry is not relatable. I think the guy literally was at rock bottom at, at points, not not just at a point, at points in his life. And how he was able to overcome them, I think, is extraordinary. And I think the lessons that you can get from Don Cherry's life are more than you can apply them to to what we face. And yeah, 50s, 60s, 70s. But I think with Don, I don't know. I just I don't know if just because like I've read so many of his books, but I I think I would have not a better time. I think I'd have a great time with either of them. But I think. With Don Cherry, I just I think there, there's more to the man than you see in Coach's Corner, and just stuff that I've heard that people who have met him before, I think it it it's 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 a departure of his persona that he plays on TV, and you know, I, just, I just realized that I hate to cut you off, Mike, but I look at Matt here who has a pop filter on his microphone, and I just saw that I just totally spat on my mic. I'm like, oh, we need to get a pop filter, man. <laughs> <laughs> you put. They'll throw yeah, that in the budget. The I, I, we have our blue. What is this? A blue ice? What? What, what is this, Matt? Is this a? Is this a good microphone? Oh, I'm the wrong oh. man to ask that. I have. No well, you know idea. what though? Like, I, I feel like I just told. Oh, the the smolder on Michael's face right now because he's mad that I interrupted him. Uh, go on about how Don Cherry is deeper than the guy you see on court. On court is, oh, yeah, uh, you don't give the man <laughs> enough credit, I think, and I think a lot of people don't give him enough credit. And I think if if I had to, if, if it was a choice, like. Wayne Gretzky in door one, Don Cherry in door two. Now I dabbled, but I went with Cherry. I just, I just think like, I would also like, I don't, I, I mean, I've, I've, you know, you've read, I've read history books about, you know, that period in the NHL and stuff, but it'd be so interesting to get like his take on how things used to be in the old NHL and also what it was like in the minors. Now, again, he wrote three different books, but like it was a completely different time, completely different era. And, you know, 
I just think I'd have a, not a better time, but I, I don't know. There's just, I think with him, there's, there's, there's more to than what you see on coach's corner. So I, I went with, with grapes on that one. Um, and then Steve Dangle, if he wants to, can join us. I mean, it's, it's fine. <laughs> All right. All right. Predictions. Now Prediction your... time. <laughs> Bring it back. I have this can oh. of Pringles that's staring me in the face, and Matt's just, like, shaking his head, like, just don't eat in front of the microphone. <laughs> no, I could hear you opening the thing. Oh, through dude. Phone, it's just like, it's like... I can just imagine somebody listening to that. It's like, is that dude, guy eating like, chips? Like, like, the dude is, the like, staring wrong me in the face, him? man. Um, yeah, pull up Matt's predictions. Um, yep. oh, tell Jacqueline I say hi. Shout out to her. Um, I'm not doing that now. But the, um, my predictions for anyone who actually gives a shit, which apparently you two don't, which I don't blame you. What? Um, I'd say. Never have alcohol in this podcast ever again. Oh, this okay? is, this is making it like actually way better. <laughs> oh my God. Let, let's be real. Um, first, let's go with the I say president's tro. Oh. Atlantic. Okay, I'm just gonna spitball right now. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna honestly say Montreal, Toronto. Montreal he- first. Yeah, hear me out. Montreal, okay. Toronto, Boston, Detroit, Ottawa. No, no, sorry. Let me restart. Montreal, Toronto, Tampa Bay, Boston, Ottawa, Detroit, Tr- Buffalo. Okay. Florida, Florida is a but Florida is a so Buffalo. does everybody else. Uh, <laughs> including the people that live in Florida. Metropolitan. Um, I got Pittsburgh, New York, Rangers, Capitals, Phillies, or Phillies, <laughs> uh, Flyers. Wrong sport. Uh, no, no, no. You mean the Eagles. No, Flyers. Um, New Jersey, because they should not have paid t shirt. I'm sorry. I don't think he's that good. Um, oh, but then Columbus, though, man. Uh, but then Columbus after New Jersey, and then lastly whoever the last team is I can't remember. Um, Carolina, thank Carolina. You. Um, oh, no, now hold on, because I'm not Carolina. finished. How come everyone's saying that they're such a dark horse this year? Like, am I like not like? Did they get, pick up somebody? Maybe guessing Eddie Lack is going to be a good goalie. Because like you see, like sp- Eddie Lack's in Calgary who's, who's now, the man. Come on, Carolina. Times. Scott exactly. Darling. Exactly. Back up for Chicago. Like, okay, yeah. What dark horse are you predicting? But, but, that, but that's what they're saying. Like, both TSN and, and Sportsnet are like, oh, watch out for Carolina. They're a dark horse. And I'm like, I'm looking at the roster and I'm like, okay, like. Who, are they who, who, are they are they completely just a bunch of Michael Kakamos that they could then be like, I told you so. Like. <laughs> so I don't remember, Mike. Where did I have Carolina? I don't think I had them in you the didn't. playoffs. I think I had them just on the edge or I'm maybe a wild card. You had Carolina just missing out. You had them. F- oh, okay. uh, well, no, you had them fourth. My bad. You had them fourth. You had them just squeaking in. You had the Islanders oh, okay. in fifth. And then you did. You had the Rangers not making it at all, which I found oh, interesting. That's right. And you know what? Judging on the opening game, I could I, I, that that was like Matt had them out. If they keep playing like this, I can see them not making the playoffs. Who is this? I just think that division is so it's tough. A tough. It is. It's and a tough decision. They're, they're an older team. They've traded some guys in the offseason. Lundqvist isn't getting any oh, sure. younger. It's it's tough to make the playoffs there. And you, like I said, you have the Carolinas, the New Jerseys, those younger teams that are going to start challenging a little more. It's so, uh, going to be interesting in, in that division this year. And I'm just going to do playoff teams here. In the Atlantic Division, he has Tampa, then Toronto, then Montreal, and Boston making the playoffs. No, I got Boston missing because I have two wild oh, cards right. in sorry, the that's, Metro. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't read your note. You're right. Sorry. And then he has Pittsburgh, Columbus, Washington, Carolina, and the Islanders, um, making it. So, you know what, Matt? I can. Well, I could see Montreal being one of the bubble teams. I know it's you know too early to panic, but, but. Um, yeah, Carey Price is still the reason I have them just getting. It's in just in the that thing division. is, man. They're pl- they're playing a defensive he's... style, where with a de- with a depleted defense core, and they can't play an offensive style because they don't have that many offensive players. You know, kudos to Victor yeah. Mete. I'm sure he's a great player, but to make it the team as a junior and be on the top pairing there with Shea Weber. That doesn't say much for the other guys. One of them being Carl Alsner, which you paid like what four and a half, five million dollars a season to get him there. 
Yeah, five-year uh, contract. Uh, That's not good. <laughs> they had to make a move. They had to make a move. Now, the thing is, you know, what do they do with that $8 million they have in cap space, right? Like, I don't know. I think they, uh, there's a lot of soul-searching that needs to be done in Montreal. Um, I think they banked on keeping Radulov. I don't think they banked on Dallas swooping in at the last second like that, uh, which would have made this team a little bit scarier. I think if you had Radulov on the first line, Drouin on the second. Um, but gosh, what a what a what a hole that they put themselves in. Now in the Pacific, we have now Matt is not much of an Edmonton fan. He actually. He hates them. Not at all. He hates the I Oilers. Hate the and Oilers. I have another yeah. hockey buddy who despises. Hate is a very strong no, word. No, these two hate them. But, like, but he has Edmonton in first. I agree. Anaheim in second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calgary in third. San Jose fourth. But he doesn't have San Jose making the playoffs. Instead, his, his central picks are Nashville, Minnesota, Dallas, and then Chicago and Winnipeg. Being the wild card. Why are you telling us Matt's picks? Because I don't think he remembered, and I don't think he had the list in front of him. You could just text him, and then he'd so be he's like, just no. Said, no, he didn't have him. Text have him. him. He's right here. But you're speaking for the man. That's just rude. I'm going to ask okay. him his rationale if you waited. Yeah, he's oh, he's explaining like my bad. picks, and then I'm going to give you the, the meaning behind go. them. Okay. Now, I noticed you put Nashville in first. Why? Because <laughs> I thought Dallas. That defense, their defense is amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? Like that, they've got some scores now, like Forsberg, Arvidsson, uh, Johansson. They're they're a pretty good team. Like, and I think it's not a cla- or a sexy pick because they did go to the Cup final last year. But I think they're primed for another good season. Same with Minnesota. I think Minnesota is underrated. They kind of always are. I just need to see them oh, win. Man. I can't a believe they round for once. They lost so much of the team's future for five game playoff run last year, man. Like, wow, did they ever overpay oh, yeah. for Hansel and company? Like, that was that no was kidding, such eh? a bad move. And like, I get it, you want to be ballsy and risky, but that was just oh, I, I remember. I don't know. I remember I was like working out and I saw that. I went ooh. Like I got a pain in my stomach, and it wasn't because I was I I, I pulled anything. Like, oh, that was just. Harsh. Now, Chicago and Winnipeg over San Jose. Discuss. <laughs> yeah. The the Blackhawks were a tough one for me to figure out where to put them. I still think they're going to yeah. be good. They have, when you have Taves and Kane and Keith and Seabrook, you're going to be a good team. Um, do I think they'll be as good? No. I could probably see them flipping with Dallas there right. a little bit. Just because Dallas has, you know, missed the playoffs and they're a question mark still on defense, but I think they have the offense to carry them up a little bit. And then Winnipeg, I'm kind of looking at now and like mm, with that goaltending, yeah, yeah. like they said, they needed average goaltending. I think, and I right, think right side a playoff team, and so I think far, right side of the faceoff it. circle, their defense is very solid. Left side, you know, seems to be left side seems to be lacking. Uh, but yeah, the goaltending though, and I don't think Steve Mason's the answer, but they have a really good top six. Like, oh my oh, goodness, definitely. like that is a top. You know, Mark Shifley was very quietly in the top five. Oh, and I and I year. swept him from you, man. But then again, you got Matthews. So, did oh, you man. really lose out on yeah, that though? Yeah. Like, I mean, let's be honest. Are we gonna no, relive really. fantasy hockey days here, guys? Come I just on. saw Draft Day with Kevin Costner on Netflix. Awesome movie, eh? Right? Yeah. I bought the whole thing, man. I was I texted Matt. I said, it brings me back to fantasy when we were just like <laughs> negotiating sometimes for hours <laughs> on deals. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, of, of my list, <laughs> back <there's> to that. <laughs> Boston, St. Louis, and San Jose are teams that I had missing the playoffs that. I guess I was, I was, on you know, list too. I, we talked about this that are playoff teams last year, and I just don't see it this year. Now we talked about this via text, but why stop it? Why? <laughs> stop it! <laughs> He's touching my chest, and it's weird. Um, what was I going to ask? Oh, we talked about this in text. Ottawa Senators. You don't think they're going to make the playoffs, even though they made the final four? They didn't really make. 
like other than losing Mark Mathot, I don't think they really lost or gained a whole lot. I think they still are the same team. Why do you? Why are you so adamant that they are going to miss it, the postseason? Good use of the word adamant, by the way. Yeah. When you when you look at the Senators, they were the only playoff team last year with a negative goal differential. <laughs> now I don't know about you guys, but if you score less than you allow, that's pretty hard to win a game, mm-hmm. right? So I think they just wrote an unbelievable season from Craig Anderson and Mike Condon. I don't think it's repeatable given mm-hmm. their track records. You know, you're missing Carlson to start the season. Maybe he'll be back There's soon. There's still no timeline on that, eh? but, the, but they're okay. no, no, no timeline. And you look at their forwards and they have the same problem as Montreal where they just don't really score a lot. You know, they were winning a lot of 2 1, 3 2 games last year, and that's generally hard to replicate success okay, with that. No, I just, I, I'm not, again, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just saw that that was an interesting choice that you had Boston ahead of them. Um, we all, and you're, st- you're still saying that Vegas is going to be <laughs> last place, right? Come on, mm, give it a little love. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I can now. I think I'd put Arizona there. Okay. I can live with that. Which is too bad, because I thought Arizona would well, kind of have a bounce th- back th- here. Well, again, it's three, four but... games into the season. I mean, there's a lot of guys yeah, so it's, it's, it's a lot of guys adapting to the system in Arizona. They brought in a lot of new faces. Maybe they will get it together. I'm, I, was, I was like you. I was expecting, not right off the bat, but I was expecting big things from Arizona. You know, they have Jarmelson, Ronta, Stefan. But um, we'll see what happens. I, I, I don't know. I'm thinking that Vegas is going to be playing inspired hockey. That they, I, I, I don't see them being a bottom three team. That is, it's just weird because you know what? There's a lot of parity right now in the NHL, which is good. Which is good. I mean, it wasn't like before where expansion teams like Columbus or Nashville were just gonna, you know, win. Oh, absolutely. They're dumpster fires. But the thing They're was, the terrible. NHL needs this team to be competitive. Now, George McPhee kind of took risks trading players away for picks, uh, but again long-term goals here they want this thing to last you know they want to sustain yeah in today's nhl that's the way to build a team you build it through the drafts that's you look at any of the top teams right now and you look at how many homegrown Mm -hmm. draft picks they have those are the good teams your torontos your pittsburgh's your nashville's now that's the that's the way you win now i guess last minute of play here matt duchene a lot of rumors are going to be thrown around well they have been thrown around about this guy where the heck does this man land? Like, what is going on? Because everyone is, is throwing names like Montreal, Ottawa, Pittsburgh. Sorry. Pittsburgh, which was which was interesting. A, where will he land? And B, is Joe Sackett completely out of his mind with what he's asking for? 100%. So, Matt Duchesne is a nice complimentary piece But he's not your team, cornerstone. I think. But, uh, no. Not anymore. Maybe three years ago you might have thought that when you look at that draft. But uh, no, now he's a good – he'd be a good number two center, I think, on a team so, for sure. But, if, okay, so I know we were spitballing – we've been spitballing teams like in previous uh, podcasts, but where – if you, three places that you could see him land, where would they be? Now, it might not even be this season. He might even just – stay the season in uh, Colorado, depending on how things go. But if he were to go somewhere, where would you think would be the most logical sense for him? Okay, I'll, get, I'll give you my top three. Uh, Nashville. Okay. Yeah, no. Yeah, Colum- Columbus. <laughs> okay. Kevin was just like, hmm. Yeah, and, and Montreal. I would go with Montreal, but I don't know who the hell we would pay up for him. No. And you know what? I only say Montreal because I think it's going to, if it happens, it would be in season and it's going to be a desperation move from Mark Bergevin to drag <laughs> that team. Yeah, into I could see. Mm, you really think Bergevin would panic like that, though? Oh, yeah. I, if they don't make the playoffs this year, he's gone. Or if they lose in the first round this mm. year, he's gone. So they you know have what? to do they, something. Montreal looked pathetic in the playoffs. I'm sorry. When Radulov is the only one that looks like he has a pulse out there, it's to make it into a six game series as they did is mind-blowing. I thought that New York completely outplayed them into the ground. Um, 
I, I, you know, I was thinking about Montreal, but at the same time, I was just like, what would we give up? Because we don't have a heck of a lot, right? Yeah, that that's exactly it. You gave up Sergachev to get uh, Drew in. Like, now, again, was, Berger, that was now, your blue like, chip like, okay, right there. Now, I'm so. a Montreal fan, and I have always thought that Bergevin's a genius. And the Radulov signing, they were all, like, at his throat, and I thought it was a great move. The Shea Weber for Subban, I think player for player. I agree. Weber would it was the better deal. That's just me. And if you don't like that, well, that's just too bad. Um, and he's made a few questionable trades and signings that I've agreed with. The Sergachev for Drew and trade to happen as as it did with the depleted blue line. You're not bringing Markov back. I thought was a little gutsy. I don't know exactly how that's going to pan out. I don't know if Drew and either will succumb or flourish with the pressures of being a francophone player. Um, that was risky. I could. Uh, I, that was the one move where I was just like, Ugh. <laughs> I don't know how I can defend that one. Um, but that's just it. Like, who do we? Victor Mete. Like, what? What is? What is Sakic's asking price? It's what a, a good player, like a player that he could use right now, a prospect and a first round pick. I, I think that was what the asking price was. Yeah, preferably a defensive and, prospect. I think. They need, they need a defenseman. So, I mean, what, Victor Mete? Like, I really don't think we could spare enough. Well, I don't think we have enough defensemen to spare. No, right, that doesn't exactly. get it Even done. Even if he has an outstanding, like, a, sh- uh, a ghost to spare kind of season, right? That's it's tough. I don't know. What about, Kevin, do you have any, like, what do you, th- do you think? you agree with Matt, with Columbus? Sure. And <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Matt's smarter than this than I am, so why not? Yeah, let's go. With, let's go with Matt. Whatever Matt just said, I double that. All right, <laughs> I, I think we've reached I the peak of this thing. So right. to wrap things up nicely, let's do a very quick round table. Give me your conference final and your Stanley Cup, and who Whoa. wins? Okay. Ooh. You go first. Eastern Conference Final: Toronto, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh wins. Uh, Western Conference Final, I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to say Chicago and St. Louis. Really? But this time St. Louis wins because they're on to an amazing start right now. They're like 5-0. and oh. Really? Okay. Pittsburgh takes it again for the hat trick. That, that, that's my prediction. Matt? I'm still, I'm still, I'm still simmering here. Yeah, I, I really want to say Leafs in Pittsburgh, but I'm going to temper myself and say Tampa Bay Pittsburgh with Tampa Bay winning that series. And then in the West, I'm going to say Edmonton versus mm. Dallas. A little throwback to some 1990s yes. playoff series. And I'm going to call the Oilers winning that series. On the cup. So we're going to have a Tampa Bay Edmonton Stanley Cup final. And it's going to be Tampa Bay to come out Do on top. Do for Stammer. <laughs> Stammer you know 17, hashtag that. <laughs> Without Stammer, they're still a, a, a tough team. And uh... Man, I think that's oh, Kucherov's sure. team he's, now. Oh, he like... to- he's taken it, and he's gone with it in a big, bad way. Uh, for me, every year, I always say, like, Washington's going to make it to the top four, the final four. And not, every year, not this year, they don't. But I'm not going to say it this year and then watch them do that. Just like every time I don't have Ovechkin, he seems to score like crazy. Yeah, so you crazy. can't say you called it, yeah. Right? Only when I have him in fantasy does he have career lows. I love that about Ovechkin. I'm not going to go Washington this time because they completely always disappoint me, <clears throat> as well as their fan base. Uh, I don't see Toronto going into the Final Four. I think they might win a round. I don't see them making it to the conference final as fast as they are, as great as they are. If Anderson's on his game and they have but really they have good depth so in many, scoring. Yeah, but you can have – they have so many holes on defense, though. And already three games – Jake in, Gardner is one hole, not many. <laughs> but I just don't – I that defense is weak. And I so, we saw it there that night. Shosh, Shosh – what's his name? Sh- Shoshnikov? He's not bad. He's on the, he was on the Marlies. He was playing in the Marlies opener when we were there. Yeah, but I'm saying like last year, he was pretty good. Because Steve, da- Steve Dangle talked about him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Uh, just if Sashnikov and Kapanen aren't on your team, you have a pretty good team. 
Right, exactly. They have a lot of depth. I think Toronto's one of the deepest teams. I don't know if they can make it to the Final Four. Having said that, I have Pittsburgh, Tampa going to the Final Four in the East. I just think Pittsburgh, they have so much experience. Mike Sullivan is an amazing coach. Um, Murray's going to hopefully be healthy. But I have Tampa, Pittsburgh going to the Final Four. And on the West side, I don't. I think Dallas is good, but they're not quite going to make a big splash. Minnesota's just going to crumble like they did last year. I'm picking... I think Nashville's going to want, like, have, want some inspired hockey. I think it's going to be Nashville and Edmonton. And then for the final, that's tough. That's really tough. I'm going <laughs> to – thanks, Kevin. I know, I know. I have to get to it soon because this thing is forever. So if I, if, I, if I look like a donkey, I don't want to look like a donkey. You know what I'm saying? Okay, th- stop it. Um, I'm picking Pittsburgh and Edmonton. Way to rip off, Matt. <laughs> I just, those are, I, I, I just, that's my thought process, okay? I think they're, McDavid versus Crosby would be a hell of a story, I think. But I have Pittsburgh winning based on experience. Because you take McDavid out, Edmonton's not that deep a team compared to Pittsburgh. You take Crosby out, Pittsburgh's still a very deep team. That's true. So, just on that alone, I'm picking Pittsburgh for the hat trick. I don't like it. I don't like it, but I could see that's he, where it's going. Michael has exited out of his phone. I was looking at his rankings. No, but I'm saying like, like you, like you, like you, Mike dropped right there. Oh, you're just yeah. like you're Mike, just like and I'm Mike. So you're Mike like, dropped. That, you're like that's it. Oh, we're not making that correlation. <laughs> that, that's that's desperate, man. You okay. should feel bad. Um, <laughs> you but, called it. All right, only eleven oh, minutes over. We'll fix we'll that fix for episode that. two. Okay, um, guys. Um, no, no, you do the, your outro voice. I don't remember it. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Uh, I apologize for wasting any time. <laughs> Hopefully, you liked us and had as much fun as we have. Click like, click subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Kick si- the subscribe button. <laughs> 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 I'm going to kill this guy. All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll see you. S- well, you're going to see, but we'll hear from you soon. I'm Mike. This is Matt and Kevin. And uh, get pucks deep. And see you soon, Hoserville. <laughs> <laughs>